And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Kindred Draven. All right, we played some Kindred Control um, with Lux, but let's get more aggressive. We're going to pair Kindred with Draven. So this is going to be just a Noxus Shadow Isles aggro deck. Kind of playing some just real good aggro uh, cards. Um, but then at our top end, we're going to have Draven with the Quick Attack, very good attacker, and then also Kindred with the Quick Attack. So basically, whenever we play Kindred decks, we usually play slow um, decks with lots of removal and, and things like that. And I wanted to try Kindred in something something different, right? Maybe put it in a deck that's attacking a lot and that um, isn't really necessarily so focused on that that ability. Like it, it's going to come up, but we're not just completely built around it. We're more, you know, we got this 4-4 quick attack body that, you know, does have the upside that the opponents have to be worried about. And so then when I was thinking about like the other aggressive champions to pair Callista with, I was thinking, or sorry, Kindred with, I was thinking maybe Callista or, you know, thinking about other ones, but decided to go with Draven because, um, you know, Draven's a great, great attacking champion. But then also how Draven creates the spinning axes, I thought spinning axe with survival skills, that could be really cool with Kindred. Um, so I wanted to kind of pair that together too, because you know how like whenever you play Kindred, your opponents always kill your Kindred immediately. So maybe if we have a survival skills... Um, keep it alive. That could be kind of cool. So I wanted to try that out. All right. So besides that, um, yeah, you know, it's just lots of great ones and twos in these two regions. We're going to be going with Curse Keepers with one Ravenous Butcher to kill it, a couple Demolitionists to kill it, a couple Glimpse Beyonds, and then, of course, Blighted Caretakers because Caretakers are still great, even though it's just a 1-1 one -one instead of a 2-1. It's still a great card. We'll have Stalking Shadows, Doom Beast, Stalking Shadows, Demolitionist, you know, like that kind of stuff for some extra reach. Stalking Shadows Onlooker. I still think that Onlooker is like one of the most overlooked cards in um, in Shadow Isles. I really do. Like that 4-1 Fearsome body is amazing. Now I should maybe have a second Ravenous Butcher in here instead of one of these one drops. Um, you know, probably wouldn't be Saboteur. It'd probably be either Onlooker or Bark Beast. They'd go down to be a 2 of to be able to fit a second Butcher in because of obviously the strength with Curse Keeper Butcher. But that's really like the only card for me to Ravenous Butcher. Because we're, we're, you know, like the Spiderling from House Spider, that's not a bad one, but that's kind of about it, right? Like we don't really want to sacrifice anything else. Like I guess the 1-1 one, one from Caretaker, but that's kind of down the road. So we're not really a great Ravenous Butcher deck except for with Cursed Keeper. Um, but the reason to play, you know, Ravenous Butcher, Blighted Caretaker, like all these ways to like, like those are definitely more ways to slay our own units for Kindred to be able to mark um, also. So, you know, we have that synergy. And then we have Noxion Fervor, which, of course, we're dealing three to our own ally. Like, this is another way to do Nexus damage that'll finish the game, but this is also another way to, like, slay one of our own allies to be able to mark something with Kindred. So, um, there we go. All right, let's give it a try. We'll go play five games in ranked. You play against a lot of Onlooker? I mean, Onlooker's kind of only in the Nightfall deck, but I feel like it should be in a lot more decks than just the Nightfall deck. All right, so they're going big. So we gotta go fast. We gotta go faster than those cards. So we'll keep we'll keep the Draven, the Bark Beast. Ugh. My deck is filled with one and two mana units, <laughs> right? Like most all the deck are one and two mana cards. 23. One and two mana cards. How, how like how do we only have just a bark beast? All right, we need some more support. This would be a great curse keeper hand. Wow. So that's not good for us, right? Because they go bigger, like in in the late game. Like this is not a good start for us at all. Not a good start at all. Alright, these are all pretty decent cards. Let's go with the onlooker because it's the cheapest. Because I'm be I'm behind where I'm behind schedule. Behind where I need to be. The party has arrived. Ooh. <laughs> 
What are they thinking about with this two mana? They thinking about like exhaust, like maybe making something minus two minus zero, like one of the saplings. Chance is strong card. Just counteracted my uh, my blighted caretaker basically all by itself. All right, so we got him down to ten. I am their end. So lots of cards over there. I'm thinking about going like Spinning Axe, make my Draven a 2-3, let the damage happen, play House Spider, play Fervor, kill the 1-1, one, one, and try to kill Renekton. That's maybe not a very good use of resources. Yeah, that's what that's what I was kind of thinking. I was thinking maybe that's not a very good use of resources. I have the best job. Ugh! In all the room. So I use I use the axe there to just put the Renekton down to three health to make it like where like it's really tough for Renekton to block anything, right? Make them not want to block. Nice. 
right, so let's put them down to one. And we have a lot of draws towards our things that deal Nexus damage. So I put the Spinning Axe on the Ravenous Butcher, but obviously maybe I should just put them both on the Draven. I was, I was a little worried they'd use like removal on the Draven. Dang. An 8-7 Overwhelm. Gotta play something else. Play something. Play something. Play something. Play Sedge 20. Sedge 20. Omen Hawk. That's not really a Sedge 20, but. For the Empire. I did the thing that Ishar doesn't kill, but I guess if they play Ishar, they die, so I guess. Alright, there they go. They played Omen Hawk. Didn't all out attack. There we go. Even with our not so great start, Draven put in some good work. And we got the win. Yeah, some Kindred aggro. You know, want to do something different with Kindred, right? Everybody always does like the Kindred control. And none of the our Kindred control decks aren't working out so great. I think the Kindred Zoe is going to do very good. Because, you know, it's Zoe and all the invoke. Stalking Shadows plus invoke units sounds pretty sweet. So that's going to be our next deck. But let's do some Kindred Draven. Timo, Ezreal, Sejuani. I don't know why we're, we are attracting the Sejuani decks. I'll keep the ones. Look for more ones. No, if they... I was at 13 and they had 12 power in play if they would have just attacked. Um, so, you know, an and plus I would have been able to, to block. But if the... You know... I was kind of thinking they would be able to attack and then play some pump spells or something, or, you know, like, use a Exhaust or Ruthless Predator or something like that that would also grow Renekton. But simply, if they didn't have any spells, they couldn't kill me. Yeah, but if they had, you know, Shapestone or any spells like that, then, yeah, we could have definitely died. So it's the best for this round to play the double ones. But it makes my future rounds worse, right? Like, if I just go House Spider here and keep two ones in my hand, then next round we get to go, you know, Legion Grenadier plus one drop, and then the following round we get to play one drop plus Doom Beast, right? So I maximized this round, but that could be to the detriment of my future rounds. Yeah, that's basically it. Kindred, you got quick attack. Join the fight. That was such a good tavern keeper. Uh, hey, I, don't, I don't know, Fried Gold. Yeah, there's predictions. The prediction was up. I guess other people aren't doing the predictions. I thought you'd never ask. Oh, Ezreal. I never wanted to ask. Oh, yes. She does all business. One shot, all skill. Very good hand for them, right? Round one Teemo, round two Fearsome blocking two, two drop, and then Peddler, and then Tavern Keeper, and now Ezreal plus Mystic Shot. It's about as good as it gets. Remember the objective. 
they could use the Mystic Shot, kill the Curse Keeper, save the two life. But then they're not using Mystic Shot to kill anything else. So let's just basically turn Mystic Shot into Heal Nexus for two. Instead of killing a 2-2. And I, I, I'd rather have this 2-2 out attacking and everything. Um, this is a tough turn. This is a tough turn. Open attack, or Kindred, or Draven plus Doom Beast attack. I kind of want to just play Kindred because we're Kindred Day, right? It's not likely they have the third champion, right? They've already they played Teemo on one. They just played Ezreal. They probably don't have Sejuani as well. I guess they do have Sejuani. Okay, so 3-1 blocks 4-3. Three. 1-3 three blocks 1-1. One, one. So this would clear their board completely. Clear my board except for Kindred. So even though Kindred got chomped, Kindred still uh, got Frostbite. It's still chomped up in Ezreal, so that's good. The party has arrived. All right, draw more cards to discard. Maybe that's Thermogenic Beam that they can't decide which one to target. All right, so I'm not going to go ahead and... I know I could fervor that thing, but I'm, I'm not going to do it so that I could fervor the Legion Grenadier, because Legion Grenadier, of course, those went to the, the enemy Nexus. And they're tapped out. And there we go. All right. Pulled it out. GG's. And that's why I didn't save Kindred, because I was going for killing them. Sometimes you just gotta let your champions go and kill your opponent instead. Oh, Draven's so close to leveling up. Ooh. 
All right, 2-0. Yasuo Malphite, let's go. All right, opponents. Uh, they're doing what you're supposed to be doing. All right, so tough opening hand, full mulligan. So looking like I'm going Grenadier on two. Yeah, no ones. Yeah, sometimes you gotta kill your darlings. Yeah, so yeah, Grenadier is the best attacker on round two. We'll go Curse Keeper on three, and then like Demolitionist. Whoa, that thing's big. Demolitionist, maybe on four. Oh, we got Draven on three now. And then play Keeper and Demolition, it's not for. Alright. Good Daybreak start for them. I think I had to just open attack with the Draven and let them block, and then that's the end of the round. If they don't break, they'll burn. The few for the many. Do I let them have Yasuo block the 2 3? No, maybe not. Back heretic. Yeah, also super scary, of course. Killing my kindred. Oh, I was gonna butcher. Mark the Yasuo. Can we make kindred a five-five? <laughs> uh, why kill the kindred? Everyone's a garden. For Misfortune Gangplank, do you prefer the aggro deck, or is the scout option avail still viable? My beautiful face. I'm not sure the exact difference between those two, to be completely honest. I have my orders. Scout or the aggro? Those sound kind of like the same thing to me. So I think they have Steel Tempest, right? Like that's what I've that's what I think that they have. They have Steel Tempest, they're gonna stun one of these. So Alright, so let's put some down to six. One Yasuo dead, another Yasuo back into their deck. Um, yeah, most of the most of the game playing misfortune decks I've seen are, are you know real aggressive, you know, with, with some burn spells and stuff like that. Um, but I would think you could kind of play scout-ish version of that deck. Oh, life steal! What are you doing? Mm. 
I want to play Kindred so bad. But the best play is, is to open attack, because, like, you know, obviously playing Kindred allows them to do a lot of other cool stuff, especially with the Solar Priests they just played. Like, they could play Golden Sisters if I play Kindred. But I still want to play Kindred so bad. Alright, so right here, we attack like this. They block... 1-2 blocks here. 3-2 blocks there. They go to... Let's see, so they're at... Six, yeah, so they die. So if they don't have spells, they die. They can't stay alive. Believe or burn. Back heretic. Believe or burn. And this is the best attack because this forces, as you can see, like this block on the lifesteal, like I'm forcing them to block over here instead of having their 3 2 be able to block my better cards over there. No star shaping. Ugh. We are so close, but then the fangs plus star shaping. Uh, sometimes I forget the Targon never dies, just never dies. And they had it. They had Golden Sister. Never won. Without the other. I rise. I rise. I'm you. Most aggro decks have five plus mana attackers. You know, you usually have like your like your Gangplank or your Ruin Runner or your Darius, um, your Kato, Quinn. You usually have like some five plus mana thing. We did it. Kindred aggro. Dude, Kindred aggro is sweet. Three and O. Oh. Yeah, the aggro decks are just kind of better in Legends of Runeterra than the control decks right now. <laughs> but GG's. Especially the non-Targon control decks. Alright, Draven Jinx. This is an aggro deck that does not have a 5 plus mana attacker. Also, they are pretty fast. We're probably going to be slower than them. I like Doom Beast in the late game, but yeah, we, we gotta set up our early game first. Good job, Gloomtooth. You're doing good. A little sharky. Alright, so we'll go Cursed Keeper this round. Next round, Bark Beast Demolitionist.
It's not an easy attack for them to block. They go down to 10. Okay. Whoa. Whoa, Draven block. That's honestly kind of bad for me, the Draven block, because that's that's telling me um, what that says is that you know, like I still have you know good ways to win a late game without this Draven, therefore you know Jinx, and that's kind of bad for me. Also, don't have anything great to play this round. Because I'm kind of running out of cards. And I'll take, you know, they trade their spinning axe away. I'll, I'll take that. Oh, vision. Why are they not? I guess they don't want to challenge the 2 2 with vision. Yeah, not good. Not good. Alright, Kindred. What can you do? Kindred attack? I go Kindred attack. Really worried about Jinx, of course. Where we go. They retreat. It's my best play. It's not my best play against Jinx, but it's my best overall play. That crowd favorite, super scary. Beautiful face. I should just attack immediately first. Should have attacked immediately first. The hunt begins. Should have attacked first. So, you know, now we mark that little spider lane instead of something better. I guess it does mean that I don't need to, you know, Ravenous Butcher. But I, I needed to attack immediately. Love that stalking shadows draw. Maybe that hits Doom Beast. That'd be quite nice. Bark Beast. That's not good. And now, obviously, this is yeah. This it went from a good draw to <laughs> terrible results. Oh man. I don't know why they don't just, like, why don't they just use the spinning axe, discard the jury rig, pump up one of these, and then play that. Like, they could just have, like, seven power on one of those. Or two power on this thing. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. They won this game, but. 
there's just really no reason for them doing what they just did. Or, you know, not to have an extra point there. So GG's, they, they got me in, in the in the mid-game, just you know, multiple crowd favorites. Got me, and the Dravens, of course, were awesome. We're both playing Draven. They drew tr they drew two. I drew zero. And they went bigger in the late game. They had you know multiple fours and a six, and I just had one five. Good game. That's the best block I can make. Puts us to zero. Yeah, we got the wrong beast. We got the bark beast there for two copies instead of the doom beast. Alright, we got out aggroed. Three and one. The challenger didn't attack. Quad F, when you said, why didn't you block the challenger that previous round, it didn't attack. They, they kept the challenger back. I would have blocked it if it attacked. So that's why my, my ephemeral is going to die anyway, so I just blocked the spider to not take one damage. All right, we got another very fast aggro deck with this Azir Noxus. This is going to be another race. We'll keep the Grenadiers. I really haven't showed off Onlooker in these games. See, maybe I should be taking the two damage right there, like just attacking first. Yep. Wish I were taking the two damage. Because, yeah, now I'm, you know, just left with zero damage. I wish I were just taking the two. I guess because of Blighted Caretaker, I probably shouldn't offer that trade. I was thinking offer the trade because of Arena Battlecaster, but I'd still be able to block anyway. So yeah, I shouldn't have offered the trade. Light of Caretaker should be pretty good for us next round.
And this is where making having my 2 2s trade definitely punishing me. Man, they play slow. There we go. I have my orders. See, that's very good because then that, that you know incentivizes my opponent to play another card first before my caretaker, you know, give them priority instead of just passing. <laughs> For the Empire. For the glory of Noxus. That was a good card for them to play, the Demolitionist. I need my Grenadier to, to check Merciless Hunter. I haven't seen any of our champions yet. We did a good job of drawing champions earlier. I need board space for Curse Keeper. You know, Curse Keeper Caretaker. Your time in the cycle is done. Actually, I'm just gonna do this. All right, so we're playing the Ephemeral Curse Keeper. We're gonna let it die at the end, of, at the end of the round, and I'm gonna Caretaker the other Caretaker because I can't. Because if I just go Curse Keeper here, I can't Caretaker the Curse Keeper because that takes up four slots, and I, I only have three slots. So because of uh, board space, I need to caretaker the caretaker. So therefore, I'm just going to play this right now. It dies. We get a 4-3. A That's a good draw. Forever is a good draw. And I can still have, you know, like this later and gl glimpse beyond this thing. All right, so we do that. Quit struggling. Scurry. I'm very glad they're playing a spell right here first. Very glad about that. I'm just gonna kill the Darius. Does mean they get to keep the Merciless Hunter alive, but I, I think we gotta kill Darius. I got it. I got to figure out how I deal with this 4-1, but still. Just killed a champion. No, no Kindred Zillion. Um I don't Yeah, I don't know if they're they're not like the best combination. Really like with Zillion with that kind of deck, you kind of rather have Nasus. That was the worst possible hit. <laughs> that was honestly the worst card that we could see. Obviously zero is worse, but then that's the worst one besides that.
So what do they have in their hand that they're not playing? Decimates? Well, I can discard those to Spinning Axe. I'm just killing you. So obviously there's a lot of ways I can save that 4-3, but yeah, I'm... Ruinous Path. I guess that's... I forgot about Ruinous Path. Gross. I, I should have saved it. Should have saved the 4-3. We have a very weird hand. It's, it was really unfortunate that our Stalking Shadows hit Ravenous Butcher and not, you know, any other unit in our deck that would have been a lot more useful and would have made us in a much better spot. Time for the money makers. Alright, so level up Draven, having Draven killing everything. So while they're winning the life total battle 14-5, I do have leveled up Draven and a 3-2 in play. I thought I was already perfect. <laughs> Kinda guessing that last card's decimate. That's what I think it is. Yeah, well, the Draven was a really good draw. The thing is, is, like, our last, like, seven... Seven... Yeah, that, that must be nice. Our last, like, seven cards were, like, one Draven and just a whole bunch of kind of useless cards. <laughs> Whatever, man. Not like, we shouldn't have lost that for, like, where we were. But I, I let them slay something, and they got to double Ruinous Path. That was, that was a big mistake by me. I let them cast those Ruinous Paths. Yeah, that was that was the big mistake. I, I yeah, that was my big mistake. I kind of forgot. It. Yeah, that was bad. But still, with even with that, like with all the cards that we were drawing, it was just that's why that's why I'm playing one Ravenous Butcher, right? That's why I'm not playing two or three Ravenous Butchers because you get the points like that where you're just like, come on, Ravenous Butcher, you got to be kidding me. Just anything else, right? Like if it's if that Butcher is Onlooker, we win that game. You know, like that that previous round. You know, if it's any of these, you know, if it's Doom Beast, if it's Grenadier, or sorry, yeah, Doom Beast, Grenadier, Demolitionist, you know, like if it's just any of these things, we win that game, but Ravenous Butcher. Yuck. 
All right, so we ended up losing the two mirror matches. We went three and two, or not mirror matches, sorry, aggro um, against the other aggro deck. So we ended up going three and two. Um, I think our deck looked pretty good, though. The Draven Jinx one, you know, I think our opponent had a better hand, and, and they won GG's. The uh, Azir one, I think we had the better hand, and I ended up losing. A um, couple of, you know, incorrect decisions in that one. Um you know, letting letting the four three die, letting it get slayed, letting them enable ruinous path. That's something. How they were sitting with those cards in hand, I have to realize that's going to be ruinous path, um, and not allow them to slay something. So that was that was a mistake. And um, then also like the round two should have attacked should have just attacked with the onlooker for two instead of playing the house spider, and then play house spider afterwards, and that would have just also set things up a little bit better for me throughout that game and we would have gotten an extra two points of damage in but anyway it's still a, a fun deck to play and as far as you know playing something different with kindred i thought this was uh, pretty cool you know kind of taking just a unique different look at a kindred deck so those y'all watching later on youtube i hope y'all enjoyed this one if you've been wanting to play kindred in uh in something maybe aggro is the way for you to go so you know maybe try this deck out yourself all right but that's going to be it here for kindred draven so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.